Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and in this video I'm going to show you how to create those sick whooshing and panning transition effects in Adobe Premiere Pro with some simple time and speed remapping options. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos and leave a like below if you guys are ready to learn this effect. Also make sure you follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho so you don't miss any of the live streams and behind the scenes action first. So this is the timeline of that sequence that you just saw in the beginning and one thing I want to point out to you before we build it again is this line right here represents the time and speed of the clip. So you can see what's happening is it's kind of like a roller coaster. As one clip ends, it goes fast, and then the second clip starts off really fast and slows down into the normal clip. So it takes your eyes on this roller coaster transition between these clips. And that's what gives this effect that whooshing feel, and it's super simple to do. So a big point to make is that 80% of this is done by planning your shots in camera. So here's a clip, for example, where I started inside this little tuba statue to give an interesting effect, and I purposely started recording there and then slowly pulled back out of the shots. So there's this, the beginning of the shot. I knew I was going to have some cool extra footage at the beginning. Then you have the meat and potatoes of the shot, the stuff that you actually wanted to shoot. And then you have the exit shot, which you can pan away in another direction. So here's another example. I started behind this tarp at this construction site and then slowly revealed the open portion of the fence, got the main portion of the shot, and then I exited back off into the tarp area. So that gives us a beginning to speed out of, a middle to slow down into, and then an end to finish off with and transition into another clip. Now another thing to keep in mind if you want to incorporate slow motion into this is shoot your clips at a higher frame rate in camera. So if I click info here, you can see that this was shot at 50 frames per second, which isn't that high, but it still lets me slow the clip down about half speed to the 24 frames per second that our timeline is going to be in. If your camera can shoot even higher, that'll let you get even smoother time ramping options. But even if you can't shoot in a higher frame rate, like this clip here is just shot at 25 frames per second, you can still fast forward clips without seeing a loss in quality. You just can't slow motion them further than the normal speed. So you just do this effect by going fast to normal rather than fast to slow. So let's start by dragging a clip out in the timeline and I'll keep the existing sequence settings because the sequence is at 24 frames per second, not 50 like this clip. So I basically want to transition from this clip into this clip with some speed effects. You see, when I play this back at normal speed, it just looks kind of dumb because why are we in this tuba? What are we looking at? So what I can do is right click on the clips, go to show clip keyframes and turn on the timer mapping and speed keyframes. I've already made full separate tutorials on this if you want further reference. Now we get this line that we can start adding keyframes onto. So let's go to the effects control panel and you can either use this diamond button to add a keyframe or you can hold command on your keyboard and add a keyframe. So I'm going to go all the way to the point where I don't want to be fast forwarded anymore right here and I'll hold command and I'll press and add a keyframe there. This lets us split the line up into two different speeds. So on this left portion, I'm going to speed it all the way up to about a thousand percent speed it'll let me go up to. Now I have the fast portion of the clip and then it slows back into normal speed at the end. But since I shot an even higher frame rate, I can turn this down and still get smooth slow motion as well. So now when I play this clip back, you'll see it speeds right out of that hole and into the main shot and your eyes can't really tell what was going on. It's like they're being taken on a roller coaster ride. But we still need to make the first clip blend in with the second clip. So I'll do the same thing for this. I'll right click, show clip keyframes, add the speed line there, and I'll add a line right at the end here when I look up from my feet to the sky. So I'll press command, I'll add that line, and then I'll squeeze this all the way up about a thousand percent. Now the clip does adjust itself in real time, so be careful not to cut away portions of the clip or mess up your sequencing. You want to do these speed effects as you build so you don't have to do too much rearranging. And another thing that you can do that's cool with the speed and timer mapping keyframes, if you just highlight this little arrowhead for the keyframe, you can stretch it out and ramp the speed so it gradually increases from normal to fast and it's not so abrupt. 
And now I'll just attach these two ends together and you can visually see the line meets in a smooth roller coaster ramp type of way. So when I play that back, you'll see I'm walking, it's slow motion, it quickly whips up and out of that hole into the new clip and I can't even really tell what went on in that little section. It's just all of a sudden transported into a new spot. So that's the same exact technique I used for every single clip in the intro sequence that you saw. And it's the same exact method that you see in a lot of videos. You might think that this looks different or that looks different. It's just because you have to consider the actual video clip and the uniqueness of the clips that are done in camera. For example, I started it in a hole in that one clip, which gives it that cool zoom out feel. And for this clip, for example, I, there's this black tarp. And you also have to consider the movement of the camera. In this clip, we're moving left and it keeps moving left and down onto this scene, which gives it some continuity. So you got to fit these things together like a puzzle piece. Consider these while you're shooting in camera. But I found that it works pretty well in a lot of situations. Like the beginning example clip, I didn't really plan out those shots all that well. I just kind of took a bunch of old B-roll that I had and I made them fit together and they all kind of fit together in an interesting way. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it below. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already and go follow me on Instagram at Justin Odisho so I can reach out with you guys and connect with you more on there. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought and once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.